This is He Knows Everything bringing you that heat and that fire. We keeping the foot on the what on the knees. We keeping the foot on the what on the knees. Let's talk about it. Okay. Jamel Charlo. A lot of people are sipping what's called the Rudy Poo and Plum Plum Bring tea. A lot of people are sipping the classic dope intro glow tea. A lot of people are sipping what's called the ultra fanboy with the ultra fanboy rhetoric tea. This is one of those things where he knows everything will reveal himself as the seer and the visionary that he is. The Batman mode that he is after September 30th. See, what boxing fans don't hold the feet to the fire when it happens to be fighters that they supposedly galvanize behind or fighters that they are showing fake love. Because let's be honest, the Charlo brothers, they're being, they've been getting fake love as of late. A lot of people have been polarized against them. A lot of people have said a lot of negativity against them. Now, all of a sudden, Jamel Charlo is getting all of this fake ass praise. Let me say it again. Jamel Charlo's getting all this fake ass praise. Even the people that's rooting for Jamel Charlo, they weren't even rooting for him in the first place. So rah, stop the presses and pop the brakes on the nonsense and go sit down somewhere. And what? Higgity fucking hush with that nonsense. People, let you forget. Let's have to remind your rabbit asses. Let me say it again. Let you forget. Let's have to remind your rabbit asses. Y'all act like I wasn't around. I was the one consistently and from an authentically standpoint giving the charlos their credit from day one so if anyone is quantified calculated and verified to talk about the charlos more than anyone else it's he knows everything that's bringing you that what that heat and that fire and keeping the foot on the what on the knees and keeping the foot on the what on the knees let's talk about it man when it's all said and done jamel charlos a scumbag jamel charlos a douchebag you don't do this to your family member and everyone that's supporting this shit. You're starting to realize why I don't trust commentators. Why I don't trust people in the comment section from day one? Because I knew you motherfuckers was scumbags. I knew you motherfuckers was douchebags. I knew you motherfuckers were fence straddlers. I knew you motherfuckers jump from channel to channel like opera singers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they go from another channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all opera singers at your truest and your most properest levels. Y'all need false reassurances. Beta males need that. Jamel Charlo revealed himself as a fucking beta male. You don't trust your brother. You don't touch your brother's shit. You don't trust. You don't touch your family shit. This is the equivalent of him fucking Jamal Charlo's woman. Yes, it's that deep and profound. Let me say that again, because what I said was so deep and profound. So hear me and hear me. Motherfucking. Well, this is the equivalent of him fucking Jamal Charlo's bitch. As a matter of fact, there is a rumor out there that said that the fallout for them was because of the woman that Jamal Charlo has kids with. Yes, see, y'all motherfuckers didn't even know this shit behind the scenes. Jamal Charlo wanted that woman. And he spited Jamal Charlo. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. Mel has proven time and time again that he hates the fact that he's a twin. He hates the fact that he has to share claim to fame with Jamal Charlo. I can only imagine when he wasn't undisputed and boxing was all about Jamal Charlo, how much he ranted. And you guys saw that. You guys saw all that ranting that he was doing, all that running his mouth that he was doing, all of the barking that he was doing, but because he was trying to say, hey, hello, I'm the loudest person in the room. I need attention. But we know what the terminology is. The loudest person in the room is usually the most insecure. Let me say it again. The loudest person in the room is usually the most insecure. The motherfucker's insecure. And if you're looking at this, you're deducing this, you have what's called critical deductive reasoning. And you're not on some cognitive dissonance nonsense. You can see this for what it is. But a lot of people can't because they are programmed. They are neuro linguistic programmed into becoming brain full of mush and brainwashed dodo heads. They don't understand. Canelo Alvarez was chopping at the bits. Canelo Alvarez is going. When Canelo handpicks you, that's not a good place to be at. Let me say that again. When Canelo handpicks you, that's not a good place to be at. He handpicked Jamel Charlo. Do you want to know why he did that? Because Jamel Charlo is the weakest link. He gets hot-headed in fights. 
the guy sits there and goes away from the game plan. And Jamel Charlo loves the fucking attention. These are all things that Canelo can expose. Canelo's not a bad boxer. Canelo's not trash. He's actually pretty fucking good. He's just nowhere fucking near the level that motherfuckers say that he is. And in his truest and his most properest levels of being pretty good, he can actually expose Jamel Charlo. I done told you rabbit asses. Jamel Charlo never fought at 168. Why aren't you guys seeing this for what it is? See, people cannot counter he knows everything because he's bringing the truth. The truth hurts, but the truth will set you free. And those whom the truth set free are free indeed. You guys are the captives. The problem is the truth is coming unto thee, but you don't want to accept it. Those whom they've rejected became the chief cornerstone. How many times he knows everything has to become a chief cornerstone to you guys? You keep rejecting and then want way after the fact, man. He knows you was right. He knows, man, you was on the wave. He knows you was on the thumb. You was on the needle. You was in the aisle of the damn situation. Canelo Alvarez has a three fight deal. Jamel Charlo is the first fight. See, if Jamel Charlo was the third fight, then I would look and say, okay, yeah, yeah he going to beat Canelo. Because then I would understand it's towards the end. Canelo is accepting the fact that he's not getting shit on his terms. Everything's going to be fair. Everything's going to be right. Everything's going to be just. And yes, when you're looking at things from a plain white paper, Jamel Charlo should be able to beat Canelo Alvarez. So I don't disagree with y'all on that. I just know with the cheating that's associated with boxing, the dark sport variation that's behind boxing, and the fact that Canelo Alvarez needs an immediate resuscitation of his career after getting exposed by Dimitri Bivol, after looking like shit against John Ryder, they're going to use Jamel Charlo. They're going to lynch him. He's going to be the lynching poster boy. They did this with Deontay Wilder with Tyson Fury. They need to resuscitate Canelo Alvarez. And they're going to do this off of the strength of Jamel Charlo. And if you can't see this for what it is, I can't help you. And then the fact that Jamel Charlo is going against his brother once again. How many times and times again, Jamel Charlo don't get it. Every time he goes against his brother, something bad happens. When he went against his brother against Tony Harrison, what happened? He lost. Then he had to run it back. When he went against his brother again and Brian Costano, what happened? A controversial draw and he had to run it back. This time around, it ain't going to be this. This is his strike three. Let me say it again. This is his strike three. So you know what's going to happen? He's going to get knocked the fuck out. That's the cold hearted. That's the unadulterated. That's the cut through two tele fashion. I keeps the foot on the what on the knicks. I keeps the foot on the what on the knicks. This is He Knows Everything. Check it out.